listen, I've been talking about this all morning. I had a long conversation with my daughter, who's the who's the the queen of Generation Z, and uh, she and I stumbled on the show. We didn't even realize that we both watched this show. And it was that we always suggest to each other, hey, what are you watching right now? You watching this? You watching that? And one of the things I told her to watch, you got to watch Z-Way. And she said, Daddy, I, I, I can't believe that you watched that on Showtime. Yes. She said, I love Z-Way. I said, why? She said, I finally feel like I have representation on TV that someone who understands my perspective and understands my humor. So I immediately said, well, we got to get her on the show. <laughs> and, and so today, this is one of the most electric, fine voices that I enjoy watching and listening to. DB, can you do the honors? Of course I can. Of course I can. She's a comedian. She's a writer for shows like Jesus and Mero and Stephen Colbert. She's a podcast host. She created the show Beta with Z-Way. And now she is the creator, the writer, the executive producer, and the host of her own late night show, Z-Way on Showtime. Please welcome Z-Way. Z-Way! Z-Way! Z-Way, what up? Yo, thank you for having me. Y'all are icons. This is historic for me. (laughs) <laughs> oh come on, man! Oh, you, wow! Yeah, icons. You gonna go that far? You you, you put us on an iconic yeah. level? Yeah. I mean, how could you not? Know, Sway got the answers. This is iconic moments in pop culture. <laughs> oh, yes. shit. okay. There you oh, have shit. it, man. <laughs> Yo, that's my <laughs> that's my claim to fame, Z Way. That's my claim to fame. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> welcome to the show. I want to play this clip from your show real quick. And citizens, I'm going to open up the phone lines. If you happen to watch her, 888-742-3345. And if you, if you don't, get to know her. Take a listen to this. Despite the country being in the middle of a pandemic, plastic surgery procedures are actually on the rise. There is a long history of women getting elective surgery on television shows. I decided to follow in the footsteps of my hero, Vicki Gunvalson, and visit one of New York's most prominent plastic surgeons. Hi. How are you? Dr. Greenberg. I'm Dr. Greenberg. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. I'm looking to get a whole new face, whole new body. What augmentations would you recommend for me? Sometimes as we age, not that you're aging or anything. How old do you think I am? 24. Goo goo gaga. <laughs> Black don't crack. <laughs> nope, yeah, and you looking great. Um, <laughs> how old are you really? No, I'm not gonna tell you on camera. Okay, well, however old you are, yeah. I can make you look younger. Thank you. By the time you're done, we're giving you a bottle. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I didn't even catch that one. Goo goo gaga. Goo goo gaga. Uh, I love your show. I, I'm trying to see why you're here. I I want to know where did this all begin? Like at what what point in your life did you think that you know what? I want to talk about race. I want to talk about politics in my own way and shed some insight on folks through comedy that they may not realize. Because I feel like a lot of your guests, by the time they walk away, have aha moments. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> where, totally. where, yeah, where, where, where did that begin? Honestly, I mean, I am a black woman, so people have been bringing up race to me unprompted all my life. To the point where it's like, why are you telling me about your black friend? This is a Wendy, sir. Like, I do not know you. <laughs> so I thought, yo, if there was actually a camera in front of this, it would be as entertaining as it is traumatic for me. <laughs> so that's really the inspiration. It's just living and existing. Living and existing. And um, I, I saw a, a, a episode uh, that you did what I want to say, Adam Pally. Yeah, Adam Pally. He's yes, so Adam Pally, and you you asked him to out of a group of pictures um, uh, cast a uh, cast a movie about abolitionists, you know, and <laughs> and and he seemed so stressed out on it, but at the same time he played to it. What do you say to your guests when they come to the show that this is going to be unorthodox humor, you know, take it as you receive it. Uh, what do you say to them? I tell them to just be themselves and like. And, you know, I'm not trying to get them in trouble. Anything super racist will cut out. But, like, be yourself, come on the show, have fun, and let's make something really cool together. And Adam Pally was so game to cast Tilda Swinton as Frederick Douglass. So, God bless him. God bless him. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Uh, Wow, man. Uh, Baited is something I watched as well. I watch a lot of... uh, situations that you put that folks find themselves in i'm not gonna say you put them in 
they find themselves in that, you know, you can see people a little uh, apprehensive about maybe responding because of cancel culture. Man, I know we hear joking and we cracking jokes, but man, I might say something that might ruin my career. And we, we just heard Kevin Hart speak on cancel culture. We heard Cat Williams speak on cancel culture. Kevin Hart said, you know, I'm not apologizing no more. What are your thoughts on it? Obviously, you don't worry about that sort of thing. No, I don't really worry about cancel culture. It will come for us all. I don't know if it exists. Half of cancel culture is just like the justice system, like people committing crimes. And the other half are people reacting online. So I try to just not not hurt any marginalized communities. And if I do, I apologize. Okay. Mm. All right. <laughs> Straight like that. Yeah, well, you know what, Z-Way? Anyway, I feel like you would also be an excellent um, consultant for a lot of people's shows because we was having this conversation or films like In the Heights. I'm sure that you are well, have well knowledge about the colorism controversy there with Lynn yeah. manuel and the whole team and the director. And when we were talking about the director earlier this morning and how he mentioned that they did have a lot of Afro Latinos who auditioned, but it just so happened to them, the people who best exemplified the characters were lighter skinned. How would mm. you fix a situation like that? Um, I, in that particular, I would cast black people. That's what I would do. Um, I think Lemon Well just apologize, so thank you to Lemon Well for that. But I think you just move forward and say, Hey, how can I make sure that I'm actually addressing these communities and helping them and employing them? But consulting again is not free. So if you want any more advice, <laughs> yes, Tammy. <laughs> HP, you hear this, you know HP? What? I love it. <laughs> no, I'm here for all of it. I'm here for all of it, Z-Way. How you doing? This is Heather B. Nice to talk to you. Thank you for uh, calling into the show today and giving us a little bit of your time. I just want to give you props on something totally you probably not expecting, but I received um, your gift box uh, promoting the show. Oh, and I, was, I was like, yo, this girl is after my heart. I don't know if you had anything to do with your promo gift box, but I just want to tell everybody it came with a really nice little box of uh, lemon poppy shortbread cookies, which I devoured. It came with the old school bubblegum tape. Like, you know, the pink yeah. little round circle, the tape that like it came with a bike. Like, did you have anything to do with that? And are all of the things that was in your gift box a reflection of your personality or had some personal meaning to you? Oh, a thousand percent. There were ring pops. There were like old yes. school sunglasses. Yeah, I yes. came up in the 90s and the 2000s. So I am that child still with the bubble gum blowing bubbles. So yeah, oh yeah. I loved it. I like it. Uh, Z-Way is here. 888-742-3345. Robin Thede is also a citizen of Sway in the morning. She's been on the mm -hmm. show plenty of times. I love her. I feel like, you know, uh, for a while, I feel like, you know, she's, She's in spaces that we don't see a lot of us in. But, you know, now we're starting to see more of us in, especially in the terms of black women. And you worked mm -hmm. on The Daily Show, The Colbert Report, even with Robin. Uh, what's your experience yeah. been like in these rooms? Like, do, do you find yourself being the only representation or has it gotten better? Not at Robin, D.D. and Jesus and Mero. That was quite the opposite, where there were so many black and brown people that it was like, it felt like how I grew up. And that mm -hmm. was really, really a blessing, honestly. And so w when you go to when you go to rooms like Jesus and Mero or Robin, you ha you take that information. You're like, okay, how do I hire people and give them the same opportunities that I got? So that was my plan with my show. Okay, okay, I like that. Um, your your history is it, it runs deep. Uh, some people think because you know they are blo vloggers or they they make content for social media that they're equipped to handle being in your position because they've seen you do it but can, can you tell your story a little bit some of the things you did before you got in those rooms to kind of bring attention to yourself how did i get to this point in my life yeah well you know you you were doing a lot of uh, you did a lot of things outside of working at yeah. the, the colbert report and the daily show and these is Merrill. so what, what sort of things did you do to lead to this point Word. So you, it, I mean, it's all a hustle, right? Because mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys, but I was very broke after I graduated college, was working at a restaurant, was doing shows on the side, was writing, was tweeting, trying to go viral so people can notice my stuff, was producing on my own, operating at a loss. Like the first baited YouTube episodes you've ever seen, those were all things that I self-produced, lost money, no one saw them, got 2,000 views. Um, but you just keep working and working until eventually... Ten years later, it hit, 
and suddenly you're an overnight success even though you've been grinding for a decade. So all of the work that I'm doing today is a testament to the hustle I had for the last couple of years. So, so basically, to, to those who just started and see what you're doing, they love what you're doing, you can't walk into her, you can't fit her shoes until you walk into them. You can't just jump on and have your own show on Showtime, all right, mm -hmm. um, a critically acclaimed show. I'm curious about your writing process because one of the things I admire about you most is I can't guess where you're going to come from. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Facts. <laughs> I can't. And I love that. I'm just I'm just in the open floating when I watch you. What What is your writing process? <laughs> you know, I am an agent of chaos. My writing process is that I write a lot. Like at one point during the season, we were writing 50 pages a week as writers. I'm um, Cole Scola, Michelle Davis, Damon Washington, Jordan Mendoza. Um, and ultimately, it's just whatever is hot and we're still laughing at after we've read it six or seven or eight times, that's what's going in the show. But a lot of the show is also improvised. So we take the writing and then we go into the doctor's office, the plastic surgeon, or we talk to friendly voice or Adam Pally, and we like kind of throw caution to the wind and just stay in the moment with the respective person. So you don't know where I'm coming from because I don't know where I'm coming from at any given time. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Z-Way, have you ever had anything you've said that looking back on it now you're like, Dang, I actually am not attached to that statement anymore. Like, you've outgrown something uh, that you've said. Yeah, all the time. I, I mean, we grow, every single day we grow and become smarter people. So I am, I am susceptible to that as well. And so all, all I do with that is just bury those videos and pretend they didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. <laughs> <laughs> you just do this naturally, huh, Z Way? This ain't you don't even need a camera for this. You, you, you get folks laughing. What's your social life like now when you walk outside? Do, do people recognize you more? People recognize me. Um, and so now I, I started brushing my hair, putting on makeup, so people don't touch me and use selfies looking goofy. So, yeah. <laughs> so, what's your take on the whole bonnet situation then? Oh, uh, wear a bonnet. Who am I to judge? I don't. I, I don't want to brush my hair. Sometimes it takes a long time. It takes like hours. I break combs because my hair's nappy and Nigerian. Like it's tough out here. So like literally tougher than Nigerian hair. That's Lil Wayne, right? Mm. So if you want to wear a bonnet, wear a bonnet. Who who cares? The okay. Guys with do rags, wear a bonnet. Wear a bonnet. So you you would you wear you will wear a bonnet to the airport and on the airplane. It don't matter if you felt that bonnet. You wearing that bonnet. If it was custom, if it was designer, if it was luxury, <laughs> if it was a Telfar, a Telfar bonnet, you know, I'd do that. Hey, what up? Who, who are you listening to right now, musically? Who am I? Uh, I listen to Willow Smith. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> She's really good. <laughs> <laughs> She's very talented. <laughs> Willow's the bomb, yo. If <laughs> awesome. Z-Way, I wanted to ask you, though, because your personality is, is super upbeat and and you seem happy and if anybody that's listening right now would be like wow she got it all together life is perfect but we all know as an artist you know especially as a writer man like this you're gonna suffer from writer's block you're gonna suffer from days where you'd be like people just don't freaking get it like what am i doing wrong how can i make this whole thing come together what do you do to kind of shake that a little bit get rid of it maybe i'll maybe i'll go so far to say kind of shake off some of the fear a little bit of it not working out Ooh. what do you do to kind of bring you it what? back around i'm sorry go ahead sure well just to speak to y'all's show your show is an institution right like it's been on for years like it's a staple but not every episode is perfect and that's the same with my stuff right not everything i do is good but i give my pers myself permission to fail and then i come back the next day and go even harder and learn from my mistakes so my life isn't perfect but what is perfect is my ability to just reset. It's a new day. Try something mm -hmm. different. Keep working. Keep hustling. So that's, I think that's how you build something like your show, which is such a staple and so respected. The hmm. reset button. You hit the reset. The re I got it. I love button. it. And I, I love and I, it. And I like that last sentence she said, too, Heather. She got me feeling good. She got it. We should be saluting her for that. Thank you. We're a staple. <laughs> oh, shit. Z-Way said we're a staple. That means no, we're a staple. I, I appreci no, I appreciate it, too, Sway, because yeah. that's the side sometimes that folks don't see. They don't see yeah. the side of artists where you like, to her point, yo, all right, this wasn't it. a honey, but I'm going to just keep cracking at it. I'll keep going. I'll hit the reset. So thank you for sharing that. 
Of course. Thank you for having me on this institution. God bless. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, what you got coming up? I know you're writing a book, correct? Yes, I'm writing a book. Yeah, a book of essays about race and culture and pop culture. Yeah, man. Okay. Well, congratulations on everything. When when our when our building opens up, we love to just have you come in the studio and sit and just chop it up with us. If you're open to okay, doing that. I would love to- I would love to come through and play Stop Being Poor. Yeah, you know how it is. Okay, that's what that's what's up. Z Way, thank you for being on the show. She's a citizen, Z-way. the creator, Z-way. the writer, the executive producer, the host of the late night talk show, Z Way on Showtime. Make sure y'all go check it out. Play it back over and over again. Keep rising, Queen. Keep rising, okay, oh, yes. Z Way. <laughs> thank you guys. You guys are awesome. Bye. All right. I Take care. <laughs> Take care. All right. <laughs>